I'm Chris Bishop and I'm here in the chemistry department in Cambridge to give a lecture on chemical curiosities. In this lecture we're going to look at a wide range of different chemical reactions and chemical effects, each of which is either surprising or strange or unexpected in one way or another. So everything around us is made of chemicals. The, the, the equipment in this laboratory, the, the building itself, my body, the air, these are all chemicals. Everything we do involves chemicals. So one of the things that chemical reactions can do is they can emit light. And a really spectacular way of producing light is to burn white phosphorus. And so we do a fairly classic experiment called the phosphorus sun, in which we burn some white phosphorus inside a spherical flask that contains pure oxygen. We thought it would be fun to sort of scale this up and do it on a giant scale. And we had a good hunt round and eventually we found an industrial process flask. It's 50 litres, it's gigantic. And so we do the phosphorus sun on this huge scale. And uh, you know, the light is beautiful, it's this lovely blue-white light and it just lights up the whole lecture theatre. So there are a couple of places in which we have volunteers from the audience come down. Uh, in one of them we look at a, a very curious effect which is to do with starting fires. Now we usually use water to put out a fire, but in this experiment we actually use water to start a fire. One very curious experiment is uh, a sort of a chemical snake. We mix together a substance called nitro acid analyte together with some concentrated sulfuric acid and then heat it up in a beaker. And you can imagine a little bit of sort of black material that's sort of bubbling and smoking and then suddenly it almost explodes and you get this gigantic uh, carbon snake forms. It's uh, huge, it's very spectacular, quite unexpected. So several of the demonstrations in the lecture involve chemical reactions that seem to go forwards and then sort of change their minds and go backwards again. And this is pretty surprising. And we ask ourselves whether the reactions are really going backwards and even whether a chemical reaction could ever go backwards and what that would even mean. It turns out to be a really interesting question. And in the process of answering that question, we discover some very fundamental ideas about why chemical reactions happen at all.